Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be discussing the Beretta Model 1935. In uh, the early 1930s, Italy was seeking a new service pistol and uh, the military is very much taken with the Walter PP. Now, Beretta, of course, would much rather that they spent money with an Italian firm and there was some reluctance to adopt a service pistol from a foreign country, even one so close as their fascist allies in Nazi Germany. So, in 1934, Beretta introduced for trials a straight blowback, single action, semi automatic in 380 ACP or 9mm Kurtz, as they called it. And this had a lot going for it in terms of simplicity and reliability. And eventually, in 1937, it was adopted by the Italian military. But in the meantime, they introduced, Beretta introduced the model 1935 in 7.62mm, or 32 ACP, as we know it. And um, this was sold on the civilian market, and a fair number of them were also sold to various police agencies in Italy and even across Europe and other places. Um, and it was a very good little pistol. Um, very reliable, very easy to operate, very easy to maintain, and relatively inexpensive to produce. So it seemed they had a winner on their hands. Now, they also wanted to make a lightweight version, and they tried this with the 1934, but with the metallurgy of the time, 380 was a little much for the alloys, the alloy frames. But the M1935 in the somewhat milder 32 ACP turned out to be a good candidate and they made a number of aluminum alloy frames. Most of these were made after the war as this gun was. And this is an alloy frame lightweight gun. And uh, we'll take a closer look at it on the tabletop and I'll show you its features and some of its advantages. Okay, unload and show clear. The, uh, there is a heel magazine release and magazine must be pulled from the magazine well. Nothing in the chamber. This is not at all a large gun. Being about five and three quarter inches long and about four and a half inches high, if you don't count the magazine extension for your pinky. And this is a very nice thing to have because I have a pretty large hand and I can get a full solid three finger grip on the gun. And um, the gun is a single action as mentioned. There is a manual safety here and it has Beretta's open top slide, which despite possibly admitting more dirt to the mechanism than others. It's wide open, it clears itself very easily, and it makes for a very wide, handy ejection port. So cartridges don't much get stuck in here. The magazine, <laughs> it's not a flaw, it's a feature. The magazine, you'll note, the follower holds the slide open after the last shot is fired. And to pull the magazine out, it drops the slide. Now, with it locked back, you can rotate the safety and use it as a slide stop, which makes it easier to remove the magazine, but is frankly kind of cumbersome and not really that useful a feature. By matter of training, European armies of the time retained their empty magazines. So, you know, it wasn't a huge headache, but it wasn't something that would have gone over well anywhere but Europe. Um, it has a full-length guide rod, which is a nice feature, and no doubt helps with the reliability. It does not have a magazine safety, and it can be dry-fired reasonably safely because it has a rebounding firing pin. The sights... Typical for its era, are not wonderful, but they're not awful either. Uh, they're they're usable for what this is envisioned for, which was you know 
close quarters, last ditch self-defense. Um, honestly, at this point in time, the service pistol was more a badge of office than it was really viewed as a functional weapon. So calibers like 380 and 32 ACP seemed perfectly viable. Now to disassemble the gun, you first engage the safety and then force the slide all the way to the rear. Having done this, you then push the barrel back out and that is best accomplished with a soft mallet. And once you've done this, it can be removed through the top of the gun, the slide release, or, or the safety used to release the slide, and the slide can be slid off to the front. Now, at this point, the safety pulls right out. And if you look at the guide rod, it has an extension at the back, and that is what provides the spring tension on the safety. And it's a very simple setup, which is good because simple is reliable. And as you can see, there's a fixed ejector opposite the extractor on the top. And despite both being oriented more or less straight up, it does tend to kick the rounds off to the left, in this example at least. Simple, robust, reliable pistol, well suited to, uh, you know, largely ceremonial use, although, you know, the police found them reasonably effective, apparently. And um, it's a very small, handy little gun, and they're quite popular. Now, to reassemble, you put the slide back on, put the barrel back in place, and drop the slide. And doing this a couple times drives the barrel back into position and the gun is ready to fire. Now with the safety, there we go, with the safety disengaged, <clears throat> the trigger pull is not wonderful. Um, we measured it today at about eight to nine pounds. Um, and it's got a little crunchy take up. Not too bad. And so it's not a wonderful trigger, but honestly, I didn't notice that when I was firing it. And had no trouble firing it with, you know, good accuracy at seven yards. Which is certainly the sort of range a pistol like this is contemplated for. The magazine holds eight rounds. This is an aftermarket magazine. And um, it's very difficult to force eight rounds into it. I don't know the manufacturer, but um, it functions. So we'll call it good. The Beretta M1935 was in production from 1935 until 1967 and was quite popular. They made somewhere around 525,000 of them in that time. It's a lot of guns, and it's not hard to see why. It's a compact, handy, pleasant to shoot, easy to conceal, and reliable and effective weapon. It's simple, it's robust, it's easy to maintain. You know, there's not a lot not to like until we get to more modern eras. And um, I quite like it. Now, the safety could be an issue for some people. Um, the safe position is to the rear, and you need to rotate it 180 degrees forward to allow the gun to fire, once it's cocked, of course. And people with smaller hands than mine could find that somewhat awkward. But, again, overall, very popular gun, very widely used, and uh, they're, not, they're not silly money. Yes, of course, there are people at the auction sites asking silly money for them. But a good shooter-grade example can pretty regularly be had for four or $500 at the time this video is made. This one is in excellent condition and might fetch a bit more. Um, its current owner did have to replace some of the springs, so it's seen more use, excuse me, seen more use than its condition might imply, but 
you know, it's really a, just a great old gun. So, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. If you want to support my efforts here, there's a link in the description for Patreon. And um, I think that's it until next time. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.